Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, allow one function call. And before even reading the problem, let's go ahead and just look at the example code, especially how we are going to use the function that we're trying to define. I think that's the quickest way to actually understand what they're asking for. So we are defining a function that we are calling once. And this function will take in a single parameter, which is another function. And not only that, but it's actually returning a function. So when we call once, we will actually get another function as the result. That means it's a higher order function. Remember, the way I like to think of that is, if we actually want the result from this function, we have to call it consecutively. So we'd have to call it like this, calling it once and then calling it again. And then it would actually return a value instead of a function. In this case, I think it would return six or something like that. Well, depending on the parameters we pass. And so if we did this one, two, three, then this would return six, just like this returns six using this example. So a higher order function is kind of like a higher order derivative from calculus, if you remember that. Sorry, I didn't mean to trigger any bad memories. So that's simple enough. We already learned about higher order functions. The interesting thing though here is that the first time the function is called, we want it to return the proper result. We want the passed in function to get called. But every subsequent call, we want it to return undefined. In other words, we want to create a wrapper function called once, which accepts another function. And then the return value will be the function that we passed in. The only difference is that this one will only be able to be called and executed once. So for us to do that, we probably need to manage some amount of state. We need to remember if the function was called or not. And that we can achieve with closure. Remember, we can create variables within here, we can maybe create a Boolean to let us know whether the passed in function was called or not. Initially, we can set that to false and update it once the function is actually called. Now, if you don't remember what this is, remember this is the spread operator. All it means is that we could pass in an arbitrary number of parameters into this function and then access them like this, like access them as if it's an array. So at index zero, at index one, kind of like that. Now, in our case, it's going to be pretty simple. We don't even need to do that because we just need to ensure that this function gets called a single time. So first we should check if called is true, if it evaluates to true, well, it's a Boolean, so it doesn't really need to evaluate to that. But if it's true, then we return undefined. That that means this function has already been called. We don't want to call it again, and we don't want to return the result again. We just want to return undefined. Otherwise, we actually do want to call this function. What are the parameters we want to pass in? Well, this arbitrary number of parameters. We don't really have to worry about the details, but we're going to pass it in. But if we pass it in like this, it's going to be passed in the form of an array. But we want to actually use the spread operator because it could be possible that we're working with a function like this one down here, which accepts three parameters and adds them up. It's not super obvious by reading this code that that could happen because, there, again, there isn't static typing in JavaScript, which I think is really, really dumb. TypeScript is a much better language, but let's continue with this example. And I'll go ahead and comment this below code out because we won't need it again. Last thing we need to do after we actually call this function is just return whatever the calculated value happened to be. And I guess before we do that, we should probably mark the function as being called once so that we don't ever call it again. Remember, this variable is accessible even though it's defined outside. And not only that, this variable acts as a member variable for this function, meaning it will be stored persistently on subsequent calls. So let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. Now, very quickly, there is something they talk about in this article, and it has to do with the this context. It's the third solution, which to be honest, isn't really any different from this solution, but I do think it's worth understanding a bit about the this context and about the apply method. If you don't feel like reading this, I'll pretty much summarize this in two minutes using a code example, because I think that makes it a bit easier to understand, at least for me. So let's do exactly that. So the first thing I want to show you is if we have a function like this print name, all it does is console.logs some name using the this keyword. This is the context that this function belongs to. Now, if this was defined within a class like this, and actually I think we would define it in a class without the function keyword, because that's just how JavaScript works. And then we had a member variable up above like name, and let's say the name is neat. 
and we run this. Well, I got to define a name for the class. I'll call it person. Then I'm going to construct a person. And then on that person, I'm going to call the print name method down here. So let's run this and see what it does. Okay. And we got an error and that's actually my bad. That wasn't intentional. That has to do with JavaScript, not allowing you to declare member variables for classes with the let const or var keyword, you define them just like this. So we define this without any of those keywords just as it is. And then we run this and you can see it works as you would expect. This is kind of the straightforward way of the this context. But now let me get back to what I was trying to explain earlier by defining this as its own separate function, not belonging to any object or class. And let's say this is a different object that I'm going to call person and it just has a single member variable, a name. And I think we can't have a semicolon there. Obviously, this is not going to be binded to this object. So what is this going to return? Well, first, let's actually call print name and see what happens. Looks like we got an error because I didn't define my function correctly. We don't have the equal keyword. We have the colon. Hopefully my mistakes are helping you learn and not making things more complicated for you. I think sometimes mistakes can do that. Now that we fixed that, let's run this again. And we can see, yes, we did get undefined because this is undefined. We don't know what it means for this function. But if we want to actually give this method some context and then call it, we can do that with the apply method. We can say, print name is a method, but actually every method has another method that belongs to it called apply. And on apply, we can pass in some context that will be binded to this. And the context I'm going to pass in is person. So now when we call console.log this.name, this will actually act as if we're console logging person dot name. I'm going to leave it like this and prove to you that it actually does work. Let's run it. The second time you can see we call print name. It does indeed log the name. And to take it even further, we can actually pass parameters into print name as well. I'm going to maybe pass in some kind of greeting like this so we can have some back ticks. This basically allows us to format a string that we want to print using these backtick characters. So if we want to print a variable, what we do is put a dollar sign in front of it and then put some curly braces at the beginning and end. And this will print a variable. And right before we print that, we also want to print the greeting. So I'm going to do the same thing, dollar sign curly braces with the greeting before that. Now, how do we actually pass in a variable here? If we were just calling print name, we would just pass in some type of greeting here like hello. Simple enough. Now, when we call it with apply, with some context applied, we kind of do the same thing. We pass in the variable as the second parameter, but you're going to see something interesting happen. So we're going to pass in hello. And what we would expect is it's going to log hello, neat. But let's see what happens. It actually gave us an error because we expect the second parameter to be an array. So let's change this to an array and then rerun it. And now we see the second call does work as expected. The reason for that is if we wanted to pass in multiple parameters into this function, perhaps we have a greeting too. And I want to print that second greeting as well, just like this. I know our example is kind of breaking down here, but just bear with me. Maybe the second greeting is going to be bro or something like that. This is how we would pass in multiple parameters. We pass them in the form of an array. That's why the second parameter here has to be in the form of an array, even if it just has a single value, because we might want to pass in more parameters. So let's run this and you see it does work as expected. Now to wrap up, I just want to mention that leak code basically tells you exactly that. That's what they summarize up above. And then they show you the solution using the apply keyword. It doesn't really look any different from the solution that we coded up other than this function is being called with apply. And the context here that's being passed in is basically the same context that belongs to the outer function. It's possible that the outer function might get called with apply. It could be possible that the outer function might belong to a class and there are some other possibilities and we just want the inner function to have the same context as the outer function, even though in this case it doesn't make any difference. It might make a difference in the future depending on what this is method actually does. So very quickly, I'll make that code change on the right side. All we have to do is take our function, say apply, 
and change the arguments. Since args is already an array, we don't need these dot, dot, dots, so we can get rid of that. And we can pass in this as the first parameter, and I'll run this to prove to you that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.